What do international students think about the University of Bristol? How did they find the uni? What's good and bad about the University of Bristol in their opinion? If opinions? you are planning to study in the University of Bristol, then this video is going to be super useful for you. Keep watching! Hello everyone, my name is Orzukul, you can call me Drumi. If you remember in previous videos we had a virtual tour to University of Bristol. I tried to show main buildings of the uni, but this video is gonna be more informative, very useful for those who are planning to come to the University of Bristol and study. I made some questions. Can you give some information about yourself? Hi, I'm Stephen. I am a Jamaican Chevening Scholar here at the University of Bristol. And I'm studying a Master's of Science in Education, looking at leadership and policy. A little bit about myself. I love food. I love languages. I love food. I love languages. I love languages. But I think I will leave it right there for now. Yeah. Hello, my name is Sophia. I am from Chile, South America. Hi, uh, I'm Xiao from China. I'm currently doing the master's course here. Uh, it's called Education, Leadership and Policy Pathway. Um, I was um, intentionally... Intentionally? Uh, I, <laughs> I was going to study psychology here, but I didn't meet the language requirement and the school allowed me to switch to my current course and I'm still able to uh, do some uh, optional units in psychology and, and that's why I'm here. Yeah. Uh, hi, my name is Alessandro Gontai. You can call me Alessandro. I'm from Indonesia. Uh, I'm, currently, I'm 21 years old. I'm currently studying Masters in Film and Television at University of Bristol. Nice the, to meet you. The youngest student. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, I don't know, hopefully. <laughs> oh, my name is William, that's my English name. And my Chinese name is Wei Jie Yuan. And I'm from Taiwan. Um, so I'm currently doing my master's degree in public policy. Uh, I've been in Bristol for around like nine months. Hello, my name is Javid Ali. Uh, I'm from Azerbaijan. I'm studying in University of Bristol um, since September. Um, yeah. What's your course? Of course, my course is uh, MCS International Business Management. I'm Ishan, I'm from India, I'm doing Global Wildlife Health and Conservation in the University of Bristol. Yeah. I'm Holly, um, I'm a master's student at University of Bristol and I'm doing Education, Leadership and Policy. Um, so I was born in England but I was raised and like grew up in Germany for 14 years, so I spent most of my life there. Yeah. Alright, so my name is Elsa, um, I'm studying um, uh, uh, can you start again? Okay, you can continue. I'll oh, just all right. Stop, yeah. Okay. Okay, my name is Elsa. So I'm here at the University of Bristol. I'm studying a learning technology in society at Master degree. Second question. Why did you choose University of Bristol? Why I chose the University of Bristol is because of the history of Bristol. I come from the Caribbean, specifically Jamaica, like I said and there is a history of england and the slave trade and bristol was one of the country not countries bristol was one of the cities that was very influential in that so it was important to me studying about social justice issues to come and study in a location that had that history alongside my country as a way of saying hmm, we beat the system um i really love the uk and and the pathway that i am studying was the one that I really like it, neuroscience and education, because uh, as a, I am a primary school teacher, I really like how the brain works and develops, so I was really interested in that. And the University of Bristol had that pathway, so I applied to, for that pathway. It's a long story, actually. Um, I did like uh, think about other like countries even, and also the other universities in the UK. But uh, finally, I chose uh, University of Bristol because of um, the location, geography location here. It's in the southwest of the UK. So and the weather here won't be that terrible as the north. And um, 
and the UK um, has uh, like shorter um, program um, compared to other countries. So I can like save some time and like have a very intense but um, fruitful. Uh, learning experience here. Okay, actually, University of Bristol wasn't my first choice. It was my second choice, and I didn't get to my first choice. And I'm still glad to be part of University of Bristol because, you know, University of Bristol is part of Russell Group Universities. And for my undergrad study, I studied in the UK also, but I didn't study in Russell Group Universities. So I did want to experience something different, something that is more research based, because I think UOB has that research based um, type of learning. So I do want to get involved in the more academic. Uh, curriculum, yeah. To be honest with you, um, I actually applied to like several units in the UK, and then Bristol is my second priority, and my first priority was LSE in London. But after considering the living cost, it turned out I chose Bristol because like London is quite expensive for international students. It's, it's like crazily expensive. To be honest, this was not my first time to choose university because uh, in foundation year in undergraduate degree also I chose I have I had options to choose different universities. Um, but why I chose Bristol? Um, to be honest, most of my friends and especially my brother recommended uh, to choose University of Bristol uh, because my brother also studied in University of Bath and that's why. He was knowing also Bristol well. Um, he recommended, uh, and my friends also recommended, and then I also researched, did a little research about Bristol. And also, I came here before. Um, yeah, after discussions and so on, uh, from different options, I decided to choose University of um, So, I had three different universities in line, and I was looking through all the modules that we have in different universities and what I want to do after the course is done. So, I was going to the Bristol University's um, course curriculum and all of that and how they are planning on doing it. And apparently the modules that they have, they are well structured, they are coherent, they just make more sense as compared to some other university modules that are going out there for a one year program. Um, I just wanted to change, so I was at Durham University which is in like, the very like north of England for my undergraduate. Um, and yeah, I've never really lived in the south of England and the University of Bristol had a really good reputation um, so I thought it'd be nice to sort of have a change and see what it was like. So... <laughs> Not hey guys, we are here to make the video for my YouTube channel but these tickets are started an hour ago and it's not finishing yet. We are waiting. Well, um, I choose University of Bristol because I do like learning and technology since I was in undergraduate high school. So I look for um, several campuses here in the UK providing um, learning and technology. And I found Bristol have a really good courses and units, which I really enjoy too. I chose the University of Bristol. First of all, it is um, it's included in the Russell Group, of course. And the second one, uh, my scholarship requires to um, get acceptance from the top 300 universities. And Bristol University was at the same time 2021, I think like 20, uh, 65 in QS ranking. This is why um, I, I had another option too, a University of East Anglia. Anglia? Anglia. Yeah, Anglia. Next question. What is like being a UOB student? It is interesting. So I'm not sure about UOB in general, but the program that I'm on, I love it because there are a lot of international students on the program. I'm meeting people from countries that one, I didn't hear of before coming here, or two, I would have only read about in books or seen on the television or on the internet. So that's interesting. As well as the faculty here are super helpful in terms of helping with assignments, in terms of ensuring that you understand what's happening inside the sessions, it's good. But then the most interesting thing about being a UOB student is that UOB is a city campus, which means 
either the campus is running through the city or the city is running through the campus. I don't quite understand which is which, but they're mixed into each other. And so there is always something to do. There is always something to see. And as a foodie, there is always an interesting food spot along the way to wherever you're going or where you're coming from. What do you mean, like uh, being like a st University yeah, of Bristol like, student? Yeah, like uh, impression. No, I mean, it's really like um, a challenge because you are like living in another country. So you have to face different uh, challenges and uh, situations. And at the same time, you have to study. So I really think it, it has been like an amazing experience because uh, you can learn from others, uh, different cultures, you can study as well, you can know different places. So in that case, it gives you like the uh, chance to know more about uh, others as well. Um, I think it depends on like each one's choices of like uh, extra extracurricular activities and even your um, units, your optional units. And uh, I quite enjoyed here personally, um, like in terms of the all the cultural activities. It's a really global community here, and the professors, our uh, unit tutors, are all really like awesome. Like they um, instruct us in a different way as uh, uh, as what I been taught back home in China. So uh, it's totally brand new experience here. Uh, being a UOB student is a is a joy and hate. <laughs> I think the joy is like okay, the hate first maybe because I think it's you have to do a lot of readings. I like I like to read, but sometimes there are readings that you don't particularly want to read specifically. But I think yeah, you know, it's it's a it's a hate to just read things that you may not really like, but you have to read because for the sake uh, of to do your assignments. But I guess the joy is you get to learn a lot of stuff that you haven't done before. I also like the fact that we study more independently because I think you know you have to set your own time to study, to do your reading, to go to the library, uh, and etc. Et and I feel like that type of independent study is the joy that I have being in UOB. I think, well, in my opinion, it's it's really it's really great, um, especially when you like before I came to the UK I actually anticipate that I will encounter lots of resistance or discrimination or at least like several discriminations cases but I haven't encountered anything in Bristol it's quite which is which is good because like Bristol is quite diverse and then like you can meet um, lots of people who are from like all over the world like many countries so it's really, it's really great for me. Okay. It's quite chill here. My people are friendly, except for the fact that the weather changes all the time here. <laughs> yeah, I have to adapt to it. Because <laughs> like in Taiwan now, it's it's quite humid. It's like around thirty something Celsius degree. Sometimes like you feel, uh, you feel special because uh, you are studying in UK, you are studying in Bristol, but. Um, Sometimes, sometimes it's, it's, it's like normal to be honest. Uh, I can't, um, you can't just express <laughs> your feeling as a University of Bristol student, but I can say most of the time special because you're um, studying in very high ranked university. It's actually pretty fun. I mean, so back home, uh, the concept of work life balance is kind of lost on the whole generation, but then after coming here, it was kind of very easy to get that balance going well with your uni work, your part-time job and then hanging out with friends and all of that. I think that's one of the best parts of the university. And all the connections and the resources that they have, it makes life a little easier as you are planning it ahead after this. I mean, I personally have really, really enjoyed it. Um, I wasn't sure what it was going to be like and how different masters would be to undergraduate, but it is a lot, like it's a lot of work. But it is also so if you do get to have the university life and still have fun along with the work. Well, it's really nice for me. I really enjoyed it um, being 
University of Brazil, Bristol student because they provide you with a lot of learning resources and yeah, I really like it and they're really helpful to the staff. Next question, what is a typical day like here in the University of Bristol? My typical day as a student. <laughs> Well, it means waking up early because I live pretty far from the campus. Uh, so I'll be, I need to make sure I'm up like three hours at least before my class because my journey here takes me about an hour. And I, as a foodie, have to eat breakfast. <laughs> but once I'm on campus, it means then uh, there's a lot of green spaces. So there's always somewhere that I could go to chill before or after a session. Uh, I'm going to find food. And then it's always so hanging out with the people that I've met, like yourself, uh, and just getting to know things about these people and the places that they come from and sharing about myself and where I come from. So that's it. Classes get mixed in between that and the classes are interesting. I love what I study. So that's a plus as well. Yeah, well, a typical day. Well, every day it's different, but basically it's like uh, wake up, uh, go to uni, to the, to the library, study, study with some friends, then have lunch. If the weather is beautiful, uh, spend uh, a lot of time outside with, uh, with, with the sun, um, maybe go to different um, places nearby, Harbour side or Bristol or restaurants or go to different places because everything is here, it's so beautiful. You can walk and admire the, na the nature as well. So it has many um, things that you can do uh, during in this beautiful city. <laughs> um, for me, I, uh, because it's the uh, end of the second term, uh, Recent in recent weeks, so I normally go to the library to like uh, work on my assignments. Um, if it's a teaching week, I normally like have one or two classes in a day, and I like go to the uh, school building and have my class and like meet with my catch up with my friends, and then I will go to the library <laughs> again. Okay. The typical day here in Bristol, my typical day. Yeah, yours. Yeah, my typical day may be different than other people, but mostly I wake up early in the morning. I usually start working out, going to the gym, and then afterwards, I, I don't, I'm not a type of person who usually studies in uh, university study spaces, but I do sometimes. But mostly I study at home. I have a lot of to do lists to do for that day. I plan basically what I want to do, like what I want to study, what I want to accomplish, and then uh, yeah, have a lot. You don't have to reply a lot of emails, and yeah, that's it. I think grocery shopping. Yeah, basically simple daily stuff, but mixed with independent study also. Yeah. So I would say it's quite normal. Like for me, I got up. I get up pretty early, like seven or eight. Cause like recently, I've been like working for the rating company as an intern. So I work like twenty hours a week. Um, so I get out early and be ready to, you know, like have a meeting with my supervisors and line managers. So yeah, and then after like I eight hours work, I will start preparing for like readings or like my my, my assignments, that kind of stuff. And then after all of this stuff, I will go to the gym. Like typically, I go to I hit the gym like. This four to five times a week. Yeah. I woke up a little bit late because I sleep late. Uh, but uh, most of the time uh, I try to learn some new skills or try to develop myself in the mornings just through online courses and uh, looking some important videos and so on. Um, and also I would say my night uh, mostly is the gym because six or seven times a week I'm in the gym. Uh, this is also my, uh, like sport is also like my work because in my country uh, I have been participating in national team 
uh, both I have been doing boxing, sewing, and MMA. Um, yeah. Sort of waking up, not too early, but waking up, getting to the library, um, trying to get some work done. Um, if it's a Wednesday, I'll usually have rugby training or a rugby game, um, and then a social of the evening. Um, on a normal day, I live with nine people, so we're all usually sort of in the kitchen cooking dinner at the same time, so sitting around with my housemates after that. But yeah, a lot of work, but yeah, fun as well. Well, it depends. Uh, there are some days that I don't have any classes and some days I have classes. So in case I don't have any classes, I'm like, I mean, I spend most of the time at my ACOM reading materials, but when I um, but when I have, when I do have a class, I will go to the campus and like visiting some libraries after that. Uh, it depends actually. When I have um, assignments during my assignments period, I can say I spend like um, most of my time um, in the library because uh, I simply can't study at home in my room. Uh, when I study in my room, it ends up uh, always like with uh, playing with my phone, chatting with my friends, or just sleeping. Um, but usually, when I am free, I uh, I really um, I really love visiting new places here in Bristol. Um, I really like making friends because Bristol is a city where um, international students live. Uh, international students from all over the world, like from China, India, Thailand, and Russia, and Turkey, lots of, lots of like, yeah, from African countries and uh, South American countries. Next question, what's your favorite place in campus? But my favorite building is Grace Reefs Study Center. It's next to Will's Memorials. It's one of the smallest study spaces out there, but I do like the fact that it is small and not many people know about it. Oops, I'm telling secret. <laughs> I didn't know about it. You didn't know? You should go there. It's very, uh, it's a peaceful, silent study space. Not many people know about it. And you know, you just, it also closes at 10, 8, 10 p.m. It's not 24 hour like uh, ASS, but I guess it's still a great study space. I love going there. <sighs> I think, I want to say, I would say, there's no place better than my room because I, I like staying in my room because that's the place where I can be myself yeah and I usually I, I don't usually study in the library I just like stay in my rooms and read whatever I want to read so my room without doubts it's Royal Food Gardens I love this garden you, you can literally do everything there because you can have access to the internet you can do your studies you can lie down on the grass um, you can read your book you can have picnic with your friends or just listen to music or everything and it's uh, surrounded by um, trees different flowers you can explore different trees so if you do not know the name of the trees, there is QR code on every tree. Scan the QR code and find out the information about the tree. Wills Memorial Library, just because it's very, very pretty. I do feel like I'm in Hogwarts or something, and it sort of motivates me a bit more to study um, than being sat in like a normal library, because I feel like I have to study when I'm in there because it is very, very pretty. Um, art and social science library, especially the computer group, because they have comfortable chairs, with, uh, which I don't have in my um, accommodation. So I really enjoyed studying there and I can like, spend hours there. Do you work part-time? If yes, do you think, is it okay working part-time while studying? I do work part-time, I work on campus, but remotely, as one of several student quality reviewers. So what that means is I am a part of the university's quality assurance framework. They review the programs that they offer every year, and the review involves taking feedback from students, from staff, and from various stakeholders. So as a student quality reviewer, I get assigned to different reviews and I'm in charge of getting the student perspective about how things are going. Uh, I do. I do work part-time here. And I, how it is like working and studying at the same time? 
Uh, I think it. Okay, I think in general, it depends on the part time. It depends on the part time job. As uh, like for me, my part time job is a part of the university scheme. So I think they know that I'm studying, so they know how to balance it for my for me and for the other students who work in that part time job. So I'm working as a student champion, which is uh, which is the you know the role of doing uh, content on social media or like on uh, website of University of Bristol and I'm doing that since I've been doing that since December until now and we are only limited to work for three hours per month so it's not a big deal it's just like you gain experience more than the money you know what I mean so yeah I do like a balance so yeah I would say it's quite tough um, initially I had to adapt it to it and like I was quite nervous to be honest um, and because like that, that's my first work experience here in the UK so I was yeah quite nervous about it but now it's, it's getting better so I, I found the, the balance no I always extend it yes so how is it like working at the same time um like share some it's not the easiest thing to do because you have to commit to your job at the same time you have to commit to the studies that you have got going but then once you get that running along it's really fun actually because the job helps you actually decompress from all the work that's going on in university with all the stress that's going on you can zone out just do your work you get to meet more people over there so yeah it's fun um no i don't have a job i'm just just a student no i'm a full student student well uh, yes I do work part-time but it's not um, it is a university based uh, part-time job I am an ambassador uh, in my resident hall I, I live in Chantry Court since I have passion in organizing events and creating some and editing some videos I can say it's like uh, it's in my fingertips I do enjoy doing this job and it's not a lot. I organize events only um, two or three weeks, which is really good. And um, my manager always says that it's not compulsory. Uh, your studies come first. This is why it's really flexible. Next question. Do you feel homesick? What do you mostly miss about your home country? So I do feel homesick quite often because I do, I'm very close to my friends and family, so I do feel homesick often being away from them. Uh, what do I miss most about it? Uh, being able to hang out with them because they're the people that understand me the most. I also miss the food, <laughs> the food. Jamaican spices are <laughs> chef's kiss. So I do miss the food, but what I will say is that Bristol is a multicultural city. So there is, there are different food options around the place and then there's a strong Jamaican Caribbean community in a section of Bristol. So whenever I feel like I need to hear the sounds and smell the smells and taste the tastes of Jamaica and the Caribbean, if there are any Jamaican people watching this, St. Paul's is the place to go to. Sometimes yes, obviously because I was used to like my, my life in my country in Chile. So I had like my family, my friends, my routine. So sometimes I miss that, but as I was coming here, I, I knew that that was going to happen, so it's part of my life as well, so yeah. Yes! Absolutely, uh, especially the food, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> British food can be awful, <laughs> honestly. But um, the weather here can be good, I guess. Yeah, it's not that bad as I imagine. <laughs> yeah, and the scenery is here is really beautiful. Uh, it's uh, by the seaside and it's very beautiful here. It's a green city, I would say. Yeah. The thing that I feel uh, homesick about is just my family and food. <laughs> Trust me, British food is great, but I like my home country food more. <laughs> it's more flavorful. <laughs> Oops, but anyway, I, yeah, I think I miss my the food and the fam my families a lot. Uh, but for most of the times, I can also call Bristol as my second home, 
That's why now I do not feel that homesick because I feel like this is home for me too. Yeah. I do feel homesick sometimes. Um, so I, when I when I feel homesick, I think about my friends and families in, in my home country, which is Taiwan. And I also sometimes I really wanna. I really miss like street foods in night market, like skin, stinky tofu and you know. Oyster omelet, that kind of food. Of course, I miss my country, uh, my friends, because my family, my friends, because there are really important people in my life. Uh, yeah, I can say. It I think it's not an uh, endless perpetual feeling of homesickness, but it's. It comes and goes. So winter blues was a thing that I got to know that actually happens when you came here. And I was homesick around in December and January when I got COVID and all of that. But yeah, it's you get to talk to people, you call back home, you talk to your family and friends. It feels better after that. And yeah. Sometimes yes, but only every now and again. I'm quite lucky that I do get to go home whenever I want to. Um, like if I feel homesick, I can just sort of text my family, be like, I want to come home. Um, but I do get a bit homesick, especially in like ski season when my parents are sending me all these photos of them on the mountains and skiing and I'm just sort of stuck in my seat. But no, I don't get homesick too badly. Sometimes, but it's more into food compared to my family because we do have like regular call. I, I have regular call with my families. So when it comes to food, um, I find it's really hard to find it here and I have to travel to London to just only to find the Indonesian food. Mm, I don't feel homesick towards my family members, but you know, like food, Uzbek plov, or like any kind of food that my mom prepares, nothing else, just food. <laughs> what obstacles have you faced here at the UOB so far? Uh, a couple. So, I am I speak English and Jamaican Patois, a little bit of Spanish and I understand but I don't speak French. Understand a little bit of French. I'm in classes where my professors come from different countries and so they will speak different languages or even if they're speaking English, their accents are sometimes a little bit heavy so it takes me a while to understand what is being said. That happens with my classmates as well, and that happens when they are listening to me talk. So the, there is a language sort of accent barrier that is a little bit of a challenge, but it's, it's something that passes with time because as you spend more time around people, you get to understand. Uh, another barrier is understanding that things that may be appropriate in my culture back home aren't necessarily appropriate here. So there is that. And then just generally adjusting to being in a new environment, climate-wise, <laughs> as well as the different cultural contexts that exist in that environment. Obstacles. Um, well, at the beginning, like um, online stuff, online things that I have to complete, it was kind of difficult, kind of hard. And in that case, it was like, oh, I am struggling with that. I am alone. <laughs> I have to figure it out by myself. Uh, then I had problems with my bank account, so I, I had to struggle with that. And then here, uh, the, the different uh, cultures, traditions, maybe, uh, the environment as well. There are like uh, instances that you can, you have to like be like more flexible or, or know about others as well, because we are all different here and most of as we are international. Mainly language barriers, I have to say, because um, I didn't use English as my like uh, academic language never before I was here. So uh, the first in the first few months I'm here, I really struggle with the language, uh, not only just the academic like circumstances like in the lectures or seminars, but also like in a daily communication when I wanted to like talk about something with my peers it's really hard to like catch up with them but uh, I guess everything will be better after the first very first few months and for now I think I'm 
quite like suiting in. I think the obstacles that I've had here are climbing up Park Street <laughs> every day. <laughs> no, <laughs> but I think uh, more on the academic uh, field, I think it's really about, I think the reading. Because I think some readings, you know, like you want, you can understand English, but you just don't understand what it says. <laughs> Like what the reading says, you may understand like every word, but then like when you read the whole reading, you're just like, so what is the point? <laughs> maybe there's a point. It's just sometimes maybe I'm still, uh, you know, I'm still get. It's, it takes time to be able to know what the reading is about, and yeah. I would say to overcome my perfectionism, which is not, which is not, which is not easy, because I. I'm that kind of a person who was trying to, like, you know, push myself to to the limit where I can, you know, balance my life. And then I had to call um, student service, or uh, well well-being, what's it called? Uh, well-being student service to tell them that I've, I've been facing this situation, but I cannot overcome. And then after several phone calls, I I feel better. So I think that's all about mental things. Part of it, and also it's like studying in Bristol. It's it's not as expensive as studying in London, but it's still expensive. You have to like as an international student, you have to pay like three times as like three times as the what the regular student have have to pay. And then I see it as a as an investment. So I invest myself. So I want to get the the most of it get out of most of it so that's why I, I've been like quite stressed I would say maybe I am like I'm like a person uh, putting deadline to the last days uh, because uh, without feeling pressure uh, I can't concentrate on my work a lot to be honest uh, before it was not like this, but in the master degree, uh, as I have other things to do, also important things to do uh, in my country too, as online and also in here, uh, sometimes they are putting the line to last day. The university is really big, so it's hard to know where all the different buildings of the university are, so that's one of the biggest obstacles to be very honest. But then other than that, it's all a whole student city more or less, so it's chill that way. I don't think any too bad. I, I do think that I found the masters sort of, it is a lot, lot harder than an undergraduate, which I didn't sort of, I expected that, but I didn't expect it to be sort of as big a leap as it has been. So like the quality of essay and stuff that you have to write at masters level is like drastically, drastically different to undergraduate. So things I could get away with doing at undergraduate, sort of spending less time on it or being a bit sort of more careless with it. I, I, you can't get away with it at the masters. It has to be a lot higher quality. Um, it's mostly about managing time because I don't have much class. Um, like in a week, it's only like three days when I ha when I only have classes, so I have to struggle with socializing, um, reading materials, and there's nothing that keeps you up from it. Yeah, so you have to manage your own time, and I sometimes find it's really hard. Oh, I've had uh, quite a lot of obstacles. The first thing is dealing with education system because uh, it's totally different from the education system back in my home country and for example academic writing i had no idea about like writing academic essays second thing is i can say like making friends it's because i came very late and everyone had their own companies you know everyone they had their friends and i felt really lonely sometimes i used to cry why did i come here what change would you like to see at the uni wow <laughs> that's a tough one it's a tough one because i don't mean everything is perfect but wow <laughs> in the stakes of thinking about what change would I want to see? Uh, 
and this isn't necessarily a Bristol thing, but I would love to see a lot more Caribbean representation here. Meaning that perhaps it's just a function of the program that I'm in or that I'm not usually on campus a lot, but I don't see many other Jamaican Caribbean students. So I tend to feel alone, but I'd love to see more of those persons here. And then in terms of stuff that the university could do, uh, well, increasing affordable accommodation, that's one. Because like I live way too far from the campus and that's not by choice. Yeah. So increasing affordable accommodation in and around the campus, yeah. <laughs> what changes? Um, well, always you can improve things. Perhaps um, maybe like give more instances for international students, like so that they can uh, know more about Bristol, meet uh, different people. Uh, also in relation to the studies, perhaps the, um, the workshops could be done earlier, not so at the end. Uh, but uh, I think if you are interested and and you can you, and you ask for help, the the university will help you because it has like uh, they have like many options, many ways that you can ask for help. But um, yes, basically like uh, international students, they are like far away. They have to struggle with uh, accommodation, food, um, like maybe the language as well. It's something different. Um, the language barrier, so. In that case, it's, there are like many, uh, how do you say, um, aspects that you have to take into consideration when you are here. <laughs> um, I hope they can focus more on the mental health service or support of students. Uh, obviously, they are offering this right now, but I don't think it's enough. Yeah. I think the change that I want to see is uh, more structured. Because I don't know, I think maybe it depends on the course or the module but for my course I think sometimes the blackboard system is a bit messy uh, so I do want to have a, I do want to see a change in terms of more structured uh, system in the black on blackboard and I do feel like sometimes for my lectures they tend to give the you know they tend to give the assi assignment briefs or assignment deadlines way later like one or two months before the deadline I feel like it's still too tight I think they should have uh, given uh, the deadlines or the brief way earlier like four months before i mean it kind of depends on the course but for my course it has been like that and i do uh, want to see that change mm. i think it's like it's more like our responsibility to i don't know to be honest like it's not perfect for sure I think one of the things that during the, the second teaching block that got on, got on my nerve was like they went on the strike, which kind of like, how, 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 should I, how should I put it? Like, I was kind of mad at it because like I paid for it and then I couldn't, I couldn't go to the seminar and lecture. Yeah. I think maybe if they would make the university areas like this, like more compact, I can say, that would be more good. Maybe a two years masters would have been really good, specifically for my course, because it's a very broad topic, you end up rushing in a one year program, instead of that having a two years program makes it more understandable, easy going, and you just get to learn more, that's all. I don't think anything major, like I really enjoyed it while I've been here. Um, maybe just more sort of 24 hour libraries because I think the, it's only the arts and social sciences that's open sort of late at night and like the walk to there is a lot longer than it is say to Wills or somewhere like that so maybe just like the opening hours of the library and more sort of like accessible study spaces. Well um, it's not about the uni actually it's about the city of Bristol. I want to find like more variety of um, halal food because like um, the food I found here, which is halal, is like kebabs or like Turkish things, mm -hmm. uh, food. So um, yeah, I want to see more variety of halal food because I want to try more food. And the chance 
um, to change something at the uni, I would definitely make the postgraduate decrease up to four, two years because one year is not enough, especially for students who come from different educational backgrounds. Um, one year master's degree is not enough uh, to learn and to be mastered in your major. Um, at least it should be one and a half year maybe. Overall, are you satisfied with your academic journey to the University of Bristol? I am beyond satisfied. What do I mean by that is I, so when I was looking at universities to attend in the UK, the majority of them had this phrase that they say that they're a world-class university. I don't know about the others, but I know that Bristol so far has lived up to that experience in terms of delivering on the academic aspect of things as well as the pastoral aspects of things. So I have a personal tutor assigned to me that I can go to if I need consultation on anything. There are different cultural experiences that are part of it. So at the Global Lounge, which is downstairs from where we're sitting right now, there is always something happening that you can learn about the different cultures of the people who are at Bristol. And even though it's not a part of the academic curriculum that I'm studying, it's always interesting to learn about. So I would say, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with my experience. Things could be better, but they're pretty great. I am satisfied. Um... Yeah, yes, but I think that you could always <laughs> um, improve and be better um, other, because here like the system is totally different of what I have so uh, you have to get used to so if you work hard then you can do it but um, yes you can always be better and improve and, and be yeah, like uh, in academic, academically academically yeah. <laughs> um, I would say mostly, mostly likely, yeah, satisfied. Uh, yeah, despite of the some strike action <laughs> in the in the second term, yeah, that's too frequent. Uh, I can bear with the one or two, no more than two in a term. But third week, like a uh, three weeks a term. It, it, like in, in 10 weeks, three, of, 3 out of 10 can be too, yeah, <laughs> too, too much. Too much. I, do, I do feel like I'm satisfied with this academic research because I feel uh, I learned a lot from this. Maybe because I think this university offers you, for my course, the university offers you both practical and research-based type of study. And I do feel like for the research-based type of study, you learn a lot of new stuff and maybe it's just a uh, way of you how to, it's just a way for you to utilize it into a more practical aspect. But I do feel like I've learned a lot from the research. And I do recommend it to people if they want to go to the research-based type of study. If you do want to uh, find a more practical way of study, I think another uh, university might have that. But I think you will be past the research-based type of study. Despite with your academic Not at all. I feel like there's a gap between Satisfactory. Uh, I don't know, like, but but there's a huge gap between where I'm, where I'm, where I'm at now and then like being satisfactory. Yeah. Like I I cannot specify the the, the gap, but I'm not satisfied with it. Um, I can say I'm. Um, satisfied uh, because uh, because U University of Bristol I can say um, taught us as online and also in the seminars well uh, and as a city also uh, Bristol is really good is like a small version of London I can say but more cheap version uh, yeah I can I, I'm satisfied. Yeah, I would say I am. Like, I didn't have any expectations when I came to Bristol, um, so I've, I've really, I've enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would, and it's been, yeah, a lot better than I thought it would be. Yeah, I really like being here. I'm really happy with the I'm really Probably really recommend this to all of in Indonesia to visit. 
So guys, I hope this video was useful for you all and I am really grateful to my friends who agreed and shared their opinions with me. I really appreciate your effort and support because not everyone wants to be on the camera, not everyone agrees to uh, to give the interview and not everyone has time actually. Thanks for watching. Um, please, if you have any questions about University of Bristol, I am here to help you to share my experience with you. Leave your questions in the comment section. Even though I have lots of things to do, I am really active on social media. Hey guys, uh, take care. See you soon. Um, you can share this video with friends as well. It's up to you. Love you guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>